Move the Mouse here, and it's time to take a deep dive into the Mass Transit DLC. To set the stage a little bit, the city that you're seeing in the background here is called Plainville. It's my Season 11 Let's Play that I built up on Xbox Edition with no mods, no cheats, no DLC. Got everything up to the stage of unlocking monuments, and then back the city down quite a bit, cutting the population about in half. But we're going to take Plainville and turn it into Plainville Plus, in this case, Mass Transit. We are going to talk about everything Mass Transit has to offer. We're not going to build all of it into the city, though. So let's go find a spot off to the side of our map. Uh, where, how far can we go over here? So this is this is pretty good. So we won't uh, save what we're about to do. In fact, we'll uh, make a bunch of changes that uh, we won't end up saving here. So let's raise the terrain up pretty crazy here. We'll create a little mountain and uh, and let's flatten around that. So let's see, let's slope up over here and then maybe from there to there. So we'll, we'll do something, you know, just to kind of prove a couple points. So how do we get a road up there? Well, we can't just go up it, right? We have to, we kind of have to switch back if we want to get up there. You know, and can we do that? Not even, you know, so, so you really have to make some special considerations to get uh, roads up there and it can be really tricky. So. Um, if, on the other hand, though, we want an easier way to move people about, well, one of the first options for uh, mass transit that I want to talk about uh, is right here, and it's the cable cars. So there's two stops. There's an end-of-line stop and uh, just a regular cable car stop. So how do these work? Uh, let's get a little bit more road. So we can do something like that. Uh, this will just be a, a little silly demonstration, but hopefully you'll get the idea, especially if I go into the right menu option, what you can do here. So with the end of line stops, the, uh, you know, much like a, a chairlift, if you've ever been skiing, um, or, or, you know, cable cars aren't that common in the United States. They might be common elsewhere. So maybe, maybe you're very familiar with these, but basically the, the vehicle turns around in the station. The uh, middle of the line, just standard stops, are also connected to roads, uh, but those sort of stick out uh, perpendicular uh, to the building. And then again here, we'll put an end of line stop. Now we get that connected with the, uh, what is it technically, the, the cable car cables, that makes sense. Uh, but here, like you can go these really extreme um, steep elevation changes that you just cannot do with roads. So something to keep in mind if you're building on a, a very uh, mountainous map, but uh, we will not be building that into this uh, particular city. It's a really cool way, though, to move some people around. Uh, it doesn't move a lot of people, but it can move them, you know, over rivers, up mountains, on some really um, odd terrain that you otherwise might have some difficulty in. Uh, even though it's not powered and watered, uh, you can see that uh, cable cars are, are making their way up and down. Don't have a feeling there's going to be very high in demand, though, on two disconnected roads with no zoning. Now, previously we put a little bit of shipping in our map. Uh, with the base game, you have options for the harbor to bring tourists in, cargo harbor to bring uh, boats in, and then uh, this building, the cargo hub, uh, to bring boats in, but also have uh, a train and road connection. So you get a lot of stuff going in a small space there. Uh, but we've got a number of uh, other options as well now, thanks to mass transit when it comes to uh, water. So we have the ferry depot, we have the ferry stop, which is a small one there. And you have the ferry pier. Uh, we'll just set this. We'll just set this over here for now. So the thing uh, with these, uh, the depot needs to be uh, connected. This is where the the what uh, the, the, the the ferries they spawn from here. Uh, and then you need to connect these routes so that. You know, they can get from, from A to B, they can get, why will it not let me overwrite that? Water is required uh, and you don't have to make them that, uh, that cilia all over the place. But essentially this is the, the road that the, the boats will travel on. Once you have those paths set up, then you can do the lines and essentially the, uh, the larger ferries have a uh, stop on either side. So you can stop here or you can stop here. Double check what uh, nodes and roads you're connected to there. Uh, this one 
uh, is small and only has kind of one one side, one stop that is that you can you can add it at right there in the middle of that pier. Uh, this does not need a stop. This just needs to be connected into that road network somehow, the the path network. But think of that very much like roads. Uh, you can intersection them in some kind of funky ways and and enable the uh, the ferries to uh, you know loop around uh, to different stops. Again, we're not going to be using it in this city. I just wanted to show you some of those basic mechanics. Uh, ferries are interesting, and if you have uh, certainly a, a water-heavy map um, or you've built on multiple sides of the river, unlike me, uh, then those may be very useful. The other thing to keep in mind, there's a couple new policies uh, when it comes to mass transit. Uh, prefer ferries will have citizens prefer ferries. I mean, that one's pretty straightforward. Um, prefer ferry routes and you can move people over the water uh, in different ways. There's also uh, educational blimps. So instead of advertisements, you can boost education and there's no cost. So that's pretty cool. If you have blimps in your map, we'll actually put that in uh, next. So along those lines on the air tab, very similar to what we just did, um, you have a depot that you have to drop in. You have stops, so here is a stop. And let's throw one way over here. And then just like we did before, you have to connect uh, these roadways, basically these virtual pathways. So these are where the blimps are gonna travel. So, you know, if you've got something in mind for, you know, where you wanna see these, uh, these blimps flying around, this is obviously a super sloppy, simple version We'll create a line from stop to stop and back. And uh, and pretty much right away, we'll see those blimps uh, spawning and piling up at this station that's two feet away. Let's play it on three times speed for a second. Okay, so you'll notice the, uh, the advertisements there on the side of the blimps. Let's see if we change this, how quickly this updates. So educational blimps, again, there's no cost to boost education, like that's, I mean, that seems like a no-brainer, unless you really want to see the ads. I was hoping that one would spawn in without ads, but who knows? Maybe it doesn't actually affect the in-game appearance. I don't know. Um, but there go the blimps. They'll start moving people around. Uh, not that many, probably. Uh, maybe there's someone that lives over by this industrial area but works over there um, and they will love that but uh, keep in mind things like noise pollution that all applies to uh to areas like this so where is it right here you know those have those have decent noise bubbles around them um, as you would imagine i want to talk about uh, a couple other things before we reload the last save so let's go into transit and trains we have uh, the default train station. This is bringing in uh, citizens into the city, in and out of the city. If you have the, uh, if you go over to your inspector tool, if you have the allow inner city trains box selected. Now it will take trains in from the outside world. People can come and go. Uh, tourists can, uh, can come and I guess citizens, do they leave? They must. They must head out uh, at some point and come back. You would think. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. The other station that we have is the cargo uh, station. It's not not the uh, the hub that we have on the water, uh, but this one is uh, just bringing in trains and again inside, outside, um, and moving cargo around uh, the town. This helps keep some of the uh, truck traffic out of your city, or at the very least, can help you maintain uh, kind of where it's coming from, rather than all these deliveries coming from the highway. Uh, now it can come, you know, from within the zone. Uh, so you can do some interesting things with, with traffic. Anyways, not what we're here to talk about. What we do want to talk about real quick is if we go back into transit, there's this hub tab now that I don't believe we had access to. Yeah, is International Airport an add-on also? That's after dark. Okay, so there was maybe that hub tab that was the only thing on it. Now we've got a couple extra options. We've got the multi-platform train station and the multi-platform end station. So what's the difference? Pretty simple. Um, this one sits perpendicular to the road and everything kind of terminates here at this station. Six tracks right there. 
Uh, this one runs parallel to the road and uh, six tracks can come in running alongside. Uh, so you'd have this at one end if you just wanted them to, you know, come in, bounce back out in the same way. Uh, and this obviously if they were continuing on through uh, down the rail line. So that's pretty cool if you have a, a, if you want a real heavy, uh, train heavy uh, network, this will definitely allow you to have some interesting hubs where you can meet up a bunch of different lines from around your city. Um, hopefully somewhere towards the center would make the most sense um, for, for certainly for this central uh, pass through hub. Okay, one other thing before we switch back to our uh, previous save. If we go to the Landmarks tab on Unique Buildings and all the way over here at the end, we've got a couple uh, unique buildings that are unique to... Uh... Oh, this one's Shoreline. Shoreline and uh, this one's Road. Okay, that are unique to Mass Transit. So the first one is our Traffic Park. Children come to the Traffic Park to learn traffic signs and rules. It's a landmark building, so that'll bring some tourists in. Um, you can tell it's a very European influence. We would just let the kids crash into one another and call it bumper cars. Here, they're actually learning traffic safety. Imagine that. Um, over, I guess we could just talk about this one a little bit out of order. Uh, this one is the locomotive halls. So train museum, right? Get an old train out front. Again, brings in tourists. It's a, a good draw for the area. The last one over here is the boat museum. Uh, these have decent costs, but pretty low upkeep. Um, I think they've got some requirements for unlocking them. I'm not 100%, I don't recall. Probably transit related, but I've unlocked all these in previous and that carries over. So a couple uniques that we could drop in, but let's load up the old save and talk about the stuff that we wanna drop into this map that we will be keeping. Uh, something I've been bouncing around, some ideas back and forth. Uh, if you wanna see how this city got built up, that's all part of season 11 Let's Play. This is technically a look at the DLCs, so it's almost a, a separate series. But if you want to see the city get built up, check that out. Pretty much done step by step um, over the course of, I believe, 15 episodes. Now, the first thing, though, that I really want to get in here and change is going to be uh, around this main strip. So let's do the major modification first. What we're going to do, we're going to come into uh, roads. Two ways to get here, really, technically. We can go into roads and get the monorail tracks on four lane road, which we'll be upgrading this strip to today. The other place you can do that is within monorail, which is this one. Yeah, you can get access to the roads here. So we can do standalone uh, pipes, uh, pipe monorail tracks, and you can do those one way as well. So that's uh, just a single track where this is a double track. Uh, you then have them with options to build them on a two lane road or a four lane road, which is what we'll be using here. So let's just upgrade this segment. Um, it's very similar to the uh, default four lane road in that it's all built on that center divider. Uh, it does move the lights to the outside, but it keeps the parking lane. So it doesn't change too much the aesthetics of, of our build here, except for the fact that it's got a giant track that's gonna be running very noisy monorails, um, which is kind of weird because monorails generally I don't know. I, I thought they were a lot quieter than uh, subway and traditional train. And I feel like a lot of them tend to be electric or, or partially solar powered and end up being a lot quieter. But I get I'm, I don't know. I guess not in cities. Uh, we might break some zoning as we do this. We're certainly going to break some as we sneak in a couple different stations here. But I'm going to run this all the way down this four lane, all the way down to the next um, the next roundabout down here. We've got a, a very busy metro station here, and I thought, even though this does have a metro line supporting it, uh, we could again, you know, have some fun with some of the uh, the the mass transit stuff. Okay, this is going to require some modifications over here. What we've got is this is a, a train station taking in uh, people from outside of our city, and then generally what they're doing is they're coming over here, getting on the metro. There might even be a bus line nearby. Uh, we want to change this out and let me, I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to delete this. This is going to mess up all kinds of stuff. We're also going to delete that station and that's going to trap a bunch of people underground. That's totally fine. Don't worry about them. Uh, it's not as bad as it seems. We're going to flatten the terrain out a bit here because I know it's not going to, it's not going to let me put the building because uh, this one's a little bit wider. We're certainly further back from the road. Is that deeper, I guess? Uh, over on the hubs, 
what do we have? Well, we've got a monorail bus hub. That would be kind of cool maybe to, you know, to change this up, but we've got an even better option later with some of the other DLC. But for right now, I think this one's really cool. This is a Metro monorail train hub. So what does this solve for us? Well, one, we had a train station here. We got to put that back and, uh, and get that reconnected. So back on train tracks, uh, looks like the outside. Yeah. The outside one's going to line up a little bit better. There's two train, two monorail, uh, and a subway station underneath. So let's, we already broke the station. Let's break these pipes now. We're not pipes, these tunnels, right? We've got the money. We'll try and make this a little bit smoother. Okay, so from here, freeform. Okay, so we'll connect that side up and then let's see what we can do here. And then I want to delete this purple line. It might, it might figure itself out and recreate itself, but uh, I'm not even going to chance it. So that comes to here, which comes out to industrial and then it loops back. So we didn't have any train specific line. We just had train traffic coming in from the outside world. That is maintained. And we've got our Metro uh, hooked up again, but now we've also got that monorail. So back over to now the dedicated monorail tracks. Cause at the end of this road, let's do freeform. We want to hook this around. Now you'll notice the, the node where it wants to snap is like right in the middle of the road. Don't worry about that. It will complete the uh, the pipe when we're finished. The the, the monorail track. It looks it kind of looks more like a pipe than a than a road or a track in comparison to the other assets. Um, and again, let's come into the outside one here. So that's all connected. Now, where do we put stations? We don't need one, you know, immediately here. We can get crazy with our footpaths and get uh, people moving through there and more likely to hop on. So I think we want to do one, you know, maybe here, maybe very central, but I also want to have one. It's going to be a mess, but maybe on this block. Are those far enough apart? Maybe we go middle of here. Let's go middle of here because this looks like a relatively straight segment. Let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to break at least two full lengths of road. Let's do that here and here. Now we've got two monorail stations, one that sits on the side of a road and one that's got a four lane road built into it. Now we've got to nudge our D-pad left and right on consoles to uh, change the angle. But once we've done that, let's. So that does break some of our zoning. Don't I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to hit play. I meant to come back in here and see what we had. That's commercial. Those are offices. So across the street, let's make sure these all stay zoned as offices. And then let's make sure these stay zoned as high density commercial. So we've got one stop there. Let's go down the way and what was I clearing that out for? I wonder. Did I have a unique that I deleted or something? That's that doesn't seem right. I thought I think I had another unique here that got uh, that got destroyed. So let's not worry about that right now. Let's worry about. Is that a good spot for our? Yeah, that's a good spot uh, for, our, for another monorail. So we'll break two segments. The reason that I'm breaking two segments is if we go in here and try and fit this into it's just a little longer, just a tiny little bit longer. Um, so we'll delete two segments. We'll snap two. 
And then double check your zoning after because it regularly breaks it even if uh, even if you didn't technically change the position. It's a little more finicky than just simply upgrading a road. When you actually delete it, it forgets that uh, that's done there for a minute. Oh, we're going to have to do this too. So hold on a second. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we got to break the... Uh, we gotta break this up a bit, unfortunately. Okay, so let's get that rock back in there. It's a very important centerpiece. It's just gonna have to be shimmied over a bit, unfortunately. That works. I think we can get, get rid of those two trees, though. They're just a little too tight on there. Okay, now, down down this away. Well, this is certainly a, a pretty central junction right here. Tying in a lot of areas together. And I think we can do one more way down here on the end. So let's get two more stops in. This is going to be a little close. So we're going to lean on this side of the intersection. And those two segments look kind of straight. Maybe. Let's see how uh, how good they are. So try and, you know, it, there is a point where it snaps in between where it's not breaking something on either side. So that's that's your best uh, your best bet. OK, now. Whoa, was that that was not like that before? No, look at that. Why did that get snapped so low? Okay, let's 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 demolish and uh, and fix this here. We'll we'll just let everybody move back in. That's totally fine. We've got a park here. We'll try and keep that intact. So first things first. Let's slope. So to here. Yeah, I don't 100% I don't know what happened there. It, it kind of fell into an odd... Uh, an odd spot there. Let's just try and connect this directly. It's going to be a little bit wonky, the zoning. <laughs> but I can deal. Uh, where... Let's delete those two. Let's snap to the top half. I'll try and be a little bit more careful here. It definitely did some some funny stuff. Let's see how abrupt this is. It's a hill. It's not it's not terrible. And let's go in and fix our zoning now because we definitely messed some of that up. That's still that's still a pretty crazy roller coaster ride right there. I would smooth that out if I had more time, but uh, it functionally should be just great. Um, one more stop. One more stop. We're going to get in way down here at the end. And this one's definitely going to disrupt some stuff also. So we're just going to just going to deal with it. So I don't know what that does now that that zoning is a bit off. I think it's going to break that building because it's like hovering between the two zones, but also maybe not because it thinks it's zoned and it's not going to it's not going to get dezoned as a result. It definitely a building like that wouldn't have moved in on those zones, but maybe it will let it stay because we repaired it in time. Uh, OK, so what do we got? We don't actually need this last segment here, right? Because uh, we're not continuing past that station. I really wish they would put some sort of safety stops here. It doesn't make a lot of sense that that would just potentially allow you to careen off the end of the line. Uh, but that's not a problem. So don't worry about it. Uh, this gets people connected to this metro as well. So all kinds of connectivity happening here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing like we do with the other lines. So we'll start a line. Add a stop. We'll come all the way down. Just moving people up and down this belt. 
getting them connected to the metro on one side and the metro and the train on the other. Did I not add that as a stop? I think I tried to click on the metro and not the monorail part of the station. Okay, did that already start spawning them? Probably. I don't, they don't technically have a depot, so I don't know where they would spawn from. But there we go. Okay, we've got one right here. Let's, let's see how, uh, it's not going to be the best. This is not going to be, you know. Okay, we're following. We're in free camera. Is that what is it? The, 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 the camera mode. Hit the back button. Big button on PlayStation. Uh, and. <laughs> All right. That was not what we wanted. Follow. Play. Okay, free camera. Now we rotate it down. And we can zoom in and we can get kind of a bird's eye view on the, the monorail track. It's going to get a little herky jerky as it rounds through the corners and the camera gets thrown into the tops of buildings. So we got a pretty good angle. Oh, I was going to say we got a pretty good angle right when it happened. It like darted up in the air. So we've got some 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 mounds, a little roller coaster park coming up here. Put your uh, lunch up in your back up in your mouth. Um, and it's a little wonky when you look at it, you know, angle wise. I don't really like how it snaps together. I don't like it. You can't do smoothing with things, you know, move it would allow you to fix a little bit of those, just bend them in and make it look more of the part. And of course, uh, help with the slopes. But, uh, but that's, I think a nice, uh, nice addition to the city. I like that. Uh, the downside to it, I may have mentioned before is the noise, but we built it along a commercial strip, which was already pretty bad. Like you can see like the actual monorail track and metro tracks themselves aren't that bad. It's the stations technically that emanate the noise. That, that's where it radiates from. So be very careful where you put those. Make sure they're in already noisy areas. You know, these people are not going to be the happiest. That's residents, right? Yeah, it is. They're they're not going to be thrilled. Like they're right on the edge of, uh, you know, going crazy from the noise. So we'll see what that does over time. If you've got good healthcare, that goes a long way to help things out, though. All right, for the last part, I think of uh, today's build, let's come out here onto the edge of the map. Let's do uh, a, just a real plain intersection. Uh, the direction that we drew those roads uh, matters. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I, I guess that's if we upgrade. Okay, so four lane intersection, what happens? Four lane, four way intersection, two lane, two way roads, um, one each way. I don't, I said that wrong. You know, you're looking at it. You get to an intersection, you go straight, left or right. Okay, and and the, the lanes can kind of kind of get backed up. Uh, we've got a new option now. So if I upgrade, it's just like a one way road, it upgrades in the direction that you were that you were drawing it. So notice the, the two lanes on one side, one lane on the other uh, is consistent there. What we really would do is, is change the direction. So leading into the intersection, generally you'd wanna have uh, more lanes. So um, imagine this scenario. Uh, come on. So you've got, you know, you're, you're coming into a busy intersection in the city, two, uh, two lane road. Now you get rid of the parking lanes. And you say, okay, I want two, two lanes to be able to turn or go straight. And then the other one goes right. So that can be really useful in certain contexts for managing traffic. Mass transit and the roads that you get, little things like this can make such a difference and help you solve some traffic problems that uh, otherwise, you know, you'd have to rely on some mods for. Uh, this lets you trick out the game mechanics just a little bit. So that um, asymmetrical road, it definitely is something that I don't use enough and you should not underestimate the value of because you can do some really cool stuff at, at intersections with that. Uh, now, of course, we've got the monorail roads, which you can access from roads, but generally they're easier to access from when you're already working with the other monorail stuff and toolkit in the transport tab. 
Uh, there's a couple other roads also that we get though. Let's draw those out. So this is a large lane uh, or large avenue with grass. This is a large avenue with bus lanes. Now these are the uh, same width as your standard four lane roads, as well as those are the same width as your standard six lane roads that come included with the game. So that won't affect your zoning at all. Uh, what these offer is really a an aesthetic thing more than anything because you're giving up uh, you're giving up at least a lane of traffic for some grass and trees. And I believe that is a pedestrian pathway in the middle. I, geez, I hope that it is. It'd be cool if they were walking uh, around the middle instead of just walking on the outside. I don't know. It's tough to tell. There's crosswalks there um, at the road change types. So this is an interesting way. Uh, you could do that, but you would never like just end a bus lane like that. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you would. Uh, but th this is a really weird one because it's, it's, it's a really large two lane road. Uh, this one gets rid of the parking lane for dedicated bus and taxi lanes. By far, one of the best tools that we get with mass transit, though, is the highways. So let's jump over there. Let's take a look at a, a couple things we can do here. So when you're getting off the highway, notice that you have three lane highway, one lane exit. So you have straight, 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 and right. That, that right lane can do either. It can go straighter or, or get off the highway. So you know, ordinarily we'd have three lane highways. Now we have four lane and four lane with sound barriers. So the sound barrier options uh, double up kind of each highway choice. If we upgrade this segment right before the exit, maybe three segments before the exit. Well, now you, you, you've still got three lanes here that can go straight, but once they get there, now they've got another choice to make because up here, now that we have four lanes becoming three and an exit, that right lane is now a dedicated exit lane. So if you did have backup happening onto the highway, you could hopefully eat some of that by having a dedicated exit lane like this. Once it goes back down to three lanes, here you're adding another lane. So if you wanted, you could, you know, make another segment of four lane highway, or at least we could if, uh, this bridge pillar wasn't in the way. We could fix that, but uh, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's worry about what we have coming off the highway now. So if we want this to make a little bit more sense, we've got two single exit lanes here becoming, well, becoming three and then becoming, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So this should really still be one single lane that becomes one lane or adds to one lane. And now we can do a two lane highway. So two lane highway, two lane highway with sound barriers. I don't like that they don't name those the same, but they are the same. This is a one way highway, two lanes in the same direction. Two lane highway with both lanes going in the same direction. It's the same thing as the last thing and it should be named the same. So two lane highway, two lane highway, sound barriers. Or one lane, one way. Like they are the same thing. One has sound barriers. Now we have a two lane strip. Originally when I built this, um, I changed this to a two lane, one way road, which has zoning. Now we have actual uh, highway lanes that don't have zoning. They're a little faster. There's also no, uh, the other thing it does, this is important, I think, to notice. Uh, you get rid of crosswalks when you have uh, highways meeting highways. You have a road meeting a highway, you still have a crosswalk there. Um, if you want people to be able to cross the road, you, you need a road segment or you need some other pedestrian pathway kind of built in on the roundabout. We should probably uh, consider that, but we'll wait to do that for the Park Life DLC. Stay tuned for that. So the other thing, if we jump back over the highways, the other thing you can use mass transit for is for a bit of tricking out the AI. So let's let's start our journey over here because th this one requires some modification, but we're just going to deal with it. So this one intersection right now is set in stone. We've got three lanes. We've got two lanes getting off. So if we want to, you know, kind of prioritize traffic getting off, we could do that. In fact, did I not? I didn't fix this up here. So this should be two lanes all the way up to this split. And then the two lanes should become one and one. OK, so now that we've got that fixed out of the way, we've got three lanes here, two lanes exiting. So what if we had one lane that was dedicated to continuing traffic on the roundabout? Perfect, because we've got two over here. Two plus one is three. Uh, we're getting one lane of exit here, 
So let's narrow that down to two lanes. Plus the one is three. You're getting one off here. And then two plus one is three. And then that just kind of uh, works itself out. So what that does is that that makes dedicated turning lanes. It forces more lane shifts. Like you'll notice like, you know, there's going to be some crazy lane shifts around here, but it should keep things moving. That's that's the uh, the downside is if somebody is coming from here, wanting to go that way when a bunch of traffic is coming off. But who's doing that? Well, pretty much only people coming from, you know, these two sides. I don't think it'll be too bad if it is. You know, we need to space these out a bit more or, you know, not do that pinch trick right there. A little bit of a funny bend, um, you know, and, and does it look particularly crazy overhead. I mean, if you zoom out far enough, it doesn't look that out of the ordinary. It can look a little odd with all the shifting and pinching that's happening, uh, but sometimes it'll enable you to deal with traffic a little bit better. We've got to worry about not this intersection, it's this one that's causing the problem. So we got to find some different ways to get people in and out of that. Maybe a, a one-way network. Totally fine. We'll come back and look at this. This was probably a needless one-way change, but... Um, just really wanted to highlight some of the stuff you can do. Really, there's a lot of options on the highways. So, you know, we had the regular exit before. We had the regular three lane highway. Uh, that's all we had. Now we have four lane options with sound barrier, two lane options with sound barrier. And also another interesting one for kind of maybe a, a rural back area of your map. Um, you know, you can do these, which are the uh, highways, one lane each way. So that can be kind of interesting, you know, have this faster moving road that's not zonable, uh, kind of carrying some traffic. And, uh, it, you know, you, you can do a lot, I think, with the mass transit roads. It consistently, I think, is my favorite DLC for that purpose. It's the closest thing that you're going to get to any kind of uh, traffic modding on a console. Uh, you know we're not we're not getting mods on on console and that's unfortunate but the thing that is um is nice is is if you understand the base mechanics of the game you can prevent a lot of those issues in the first place uh, if on top of that you have mass transit well you've got more ways to move people around your city without them having to resort to cars in the first place but you've also got some really cool roads and highway tools uh, that you can use so definitely worth checking out if you only get one dlc this is probably the one to get i'm saying that now but at the end of each one of these dlc focused episodes i'm probably going to come to the same conclusion about that about how cool a particular dlc is for a particular type of player if you're having trouble with traffic management i think it's a must if you want to move as many people around the map using mass transit i think this provides some cool options with the monorail and the blimps the ferries, certainly if you have a water heavy map and cable cars, if you have a mountainous map um, or, you know, want to try to do something crazy with one of the snowfall maps, which we'll see later on uh, in these episodes, you know, they can all be really cool uh, ways to build in some different transport options in your city. Uh, but I think the roads, most of all, uh, if that didn't win you over, you can stay away from this one. Uh, but the roads are worth the cost of the DLC all on its own. Just having those extra options can make such a huge difference. This is a little bit different. Um, you know, it, it's not quite a let's play. It's not quite a review. It's kind of somewhere in between. You know, I want people to understand what each one of these DLCs does if you don't have them. Or uh, maybe, you know, it's good sometimes to just step back and think about uh, what's a component of what DLC? Because there's a lot of different game mechanics that overlap and it's easy to forget some of them sometimes. So good to hit that reset switch and, and take a fresh look at, you know, one small compartmentalized piece of the game uh, and try and understand it a little bit better. See, you know, how those things all fit together. Um, I It would probably be a shame uh, if I, one, didn't check the traffic. It's an even bigger shame that I didn't check the traffic before to see what we were improving. But before we get out of here, I just want to take a quick look. You know, we've, we've got our traffic problems. We haven't really... We've done some silly uh, temporary fixes. Where is it? That one right there. Uh, you know, but, but we've also added some monorail in that overlaps with the metro. Uh, transport wise, how are we doing? 
It's had a little bit of time to run. It's moving. That one line's moving a thousand passengers. So that's pretty good. I can't complain about that. You know, it's tying things in. We don't have a lot of service um, to the what would be the south of our screen and the west and northwest. So we'll look at improving that uh, with some of the other transport options that we'll be adding in uh, throughout the series still, because we'll be looking at all the other DLCs and uh, there's things like trams and trolley buses and, and other options for moving uh, people around the city. So stay tuned for that. The next DLC we'll be diving into is a fun one. Uh, it's Natural Disasters, and I thought it would be good to add that early um, in case uh, my luck with fires is tied to that DLC, which I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, things should get interesting soon, so definitely stay tuned for more episodes and builds from Plainville, uh, officially Plainville Plus now. So we're going to be adding in the DLCs, and uh, I'll be adding uh, on to here, but we're going to try and kind of build out different DLCs in different parts of the town. So check back soon for the Natural Disasters DLC. No guaranteed upload schedule for these videos. Um, I want to push them out when they're ready, and I don't want to try and stick to an arbitrary schedule. I want to sit down, really go through, make sure I've uncovered each one of the elements, talk about each one of the things that's in that DLC, and give you kind of a rundown. Again, bit of a let's play, not quite a review, but hopefully it met somewhere in between that you enjoyed. Anyways, long rambling outros are not anything new. Um, if you're new here, I'm sure you'll hear another one very soon. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, likes, comments, shares, they all help the channel and they are all so greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. Check back for more. Until then, this has been a look at mass transit. Hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one. Move the mouse, signing off.